Well, the reviews are in, and the new HasLab Galactus, which is shipping to those who pre-ordered, is going over pretty well with fans. And while that is absolutely great, and I'm so happy people are so happy with this figure and how it came out, there's a bigger issue, and the whole idea of, you know, Galactus being the end, Galactus is nigh, well, it kind of takes on a completely different meaning. Now, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, Galactus is a HasLab creation that was put on sale last year and is now shipping to those who funded it. It is by far the largest Marvel Legends figure ever, dwarfing the Sentinel, and probably one of the largest articulated action figures ever made. Now, fans are definitely happy with him. There's no knee issue like there was with the Sentinel, and comparing him to other HasLab items and just other Marvel Legends, he absolutely from what I can see in the reviews, kicks butt. I didn't buy one myself. I like classic Galactus, and I just couldn't get over the helmet with the, the two giant spheres. It just wasn't my Galactus, what can I say? So I was kind of hoping one of the tiers would be a classic head, but oh well, it matters not. People who got it, love it. Now the other thing this is bringing up is a direct comparison to HasLab's current fundraiser, or not fundraiser, uh, I guess, big ticket item that they they want the pre-buy. It's not a fundraiser. They're not raising money. It's not the way to describe it at all. So Engines of Vengeance is up there, and people are comparing this directly with Galactus because, well, the price points are pretty similar. Engines of Vengeance is going for 350 with shipping included, and Galactus went for 400 But when you look at the two of them, you know, you see Galactus with his, you know, 32 inches and all of his articulation points and light-up features and the fact that he comes with additional action figures, swappable faceplates, etc., etc., etc. Well, when you're looking at price value, people are like, okay, yeah, I felt like that was worth $400. Looking at the Engines of Vengeance project, which is a car with one figure, I mean, it might have others if it hits the tiers, but right now it's been losing more, more, uh, more backers than it's been gaining over the past, like, 20 days. This is three fifty. It's only fifty dollars less than Galactus, and you kind of you get a lot less. You get a car instead of a giant figure. Now, this is all because of well, how it's planned and the fact of when it's planned. So, any toy you're looking at, for the most part, got planned three years ago, give or take. And so that meant when Galactus was originally designed by Hasbro three years ago, so what, we're in 2022 right now, so we're talking about like 2018, 2019. Well, we were living in, honestly, different times as far as price and value, and that's completely based on the cost of raw goods, materials, shipping, and labor costs. All of these have skyrocketed in the last two, three years alone. So you're seeing these price increases on basic figures already, and you have to kind of extrapolate that. If a basic six-inch figure is getting close to $30, well, the same thing is going to happen to a giant HasLab item. It's also going to go up by the same percentage. When you see something that was designed years ago, you have to kind of think about it in those terms. It's kind of like... It's perfect. You're just not thinking fourth dimensionally. Right, right. I have a real problem with that. Don't you... So if you look at a graph like this, which tracks chicken feed prices, think of it as, you know, the beginning of that graph on the left if the item was designed at that point, but then it's shipping three years later where you're going to incur all of these price increases due to the rise in material cost. So the Engines of Vengeance was designed well later than Galactus. I don't know what the time gap was, but clearly it was designed years later and it's being designed under the current pricing structure versus the previous HasLab Marvel Legends items like the Sentinel and Galactus were done before prices really jumped up, back when a Marvel Legends basic figure was $20. So it's kind of like the moment has passed. Locking in a basic figure at $20 also locked in these giant deluxe figures at a reasonable price. And in a lot of ways, we've kind of now lived through the golden age of adult collecting. I kind of always wondered when it was going to peak, and I sort of think the coming of Galactus, no, you know, nerd pun intended, has delivered this. I mean, Galactus has always been about destroying worlds. Well, now he's kind of, sort of, in my opinion, the peak of adult collecting. So let me explain what I mean by this. If you go back to the 1980s, and I'm sure we all would love to do that in our DeLoreans, well, 
toys were absolutely aimed at children back then. They weren't designing toys specifically for adults. It was all about play value. It was all about imagination and open-ended play. And there were a lot of new IPs that came out in the 80s due to the deregulation of the FCC by the Reagan administration. That's why we got Care Bears and G.I. Joe and Transformers and He-Man and Thundercats and Food Fighters. All of that came out in the 80s because of that deregulation. It was a moment in time. Then comes along the 90s and, well, things changed. Not only did the FCC get re-regulated, but we got amazing movies like A Very Brady Special, which changed America forever. And we got The Adult Collector. Now, obviously there were adults buying toys before the 1990s, but, and this is where the difference is, most of the adults buying toys before the 90s were buying children's toys. They were just collecting them because they liked the toys, but these were designed for children. Like, Hot Wheels collectors are a perfect example, especially the basic Hot Wheels car, you know, your 99-cent car, or whatever it is these days. Now, this started to change, and I think kind of the first cracks of the adult collector were things like the Toy Biz Marvel Super Heroes line. These appealed for the first time to older kids, teenagers, and sometimes even adults, especially once you started getting into the X-Men, the show, the animated series that spawned a lot of these figures, was definitely aged up. It was not Smurfs. But the real change came from Spawn. This figure, the very first Spawn figure from McFarlane Toys, or what was then Todd Toys, was the very first toy that I think you could clearly say was designed to be displayed and was for the adult collector. Yeah, these toys all had cool action features and lots of paint and lots of paint and lots of paint and lots of deco, so they appealed to kids and collectors, but they aged up action figure collecting for the first time, and things like the Malbolgia figure, which was three times as big as a basic, really, no pun intended, broke the mold, <laughs> you know, about how much you could put into a package, and the idea that you could, you know, use other figures to help pay for larger figures. Then, of course, the next big breakthrough, I think, was Power of the Force 2 being relaunched in 1995, right in the middle of the decade. And again, these figures were clearly aimed at kids at first, noticing the muscular bodies and the missile-fying features of, you know, certain droids and things like that. But the fact that the line also included characters like Grand Moff Tarkin and Slave Leia, I'm not going to call her Hut Killer Leia or whatever they want to call her now, these are, were absolutely figures designed because adults were buying this line too, unexpectedly, or at least more so than Hasbro Kenner originally anticipated. Now, of course, then you have Jesse Falcon's amazing opus where he looked at a 12-inch accessory for a, for a military figure with a folding gun and said, wait, can't we take this technology and put it into action figures? And hence, Marvel Legends was born, or rather, Spider-Man Classics, which became Marvel Legends. But this is where it all started from, was Jesse's idea of putting that much articulation into a figure. And you could absolutely see the link between things like Marvel Legends and Masters of the Universe 2000X. But again, there's clearly a kid component at retail, but for the first time ever, there's He-Man toys that are being designed specifically for collectors. These are the ones that aren't sold at retail. They're sold at conventions or online, like Keldor or She-Ra. And this is absolute clear proof for the first time companies are making product directly for adults. The floodgates are open now. So yes, there's product for kids, but the wide character selection, the licenses, they're all now attracting adult collectors. And kind of this was that golden age, you know, the, the 90s, early 2000s. We were getting Lord of the Rings and Muppets and Simpsons. And I mean, they were figures I never even imagined, like doing the Sonambulist from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari or getting a Robin Hood from Disney's animated series, fully articulated figure. These are two figures I never imagined owning. And I'm so glad that I will when I finally get my Robin Hood figure. So we had so much momentum going from the 80s into the 90s with these lines and, you know, from Spawn to Marvel Legends to Star Wars, it was all kind of tumbling and then just sort of exploded with Comic-Con and then prices went up and that meant people were now choosing how much they could buy or if they could complete their collection because there's a big difference between paying $15, $20 for a six inch figure and paying 30. And a lot of people do feel that kind of pain at the pump and are like, okay, this is officially too much. I cannot spend $27.99 on a Jawa. So that's exactly the triple up effect that we're seeing with these large HasLab and Mattel Creations items. The Ghost Rider Engines of Vengeance was designed under the new pricing strategy where, or pricing structure where basic figures are $30. Galactus, on the other hand, was designed at a time when basic figures were $20. So you're seeing that same price increase that's applied to the basics now being applied to these large items, which is why the 
Engine of Vengeance car feels like it's not worth as much as Galactus because it was designed much like Mattel's Eternia under a new pricing structure. If Eternia was offered three years ago, two years ago, it'd probably be $300 instead of $550. I mean, look, the basic Origins figures have jumped from $1499 to $1999. So yeah, we're seeing as, as basic figures increase in price, so do the giant items. And honestly, it's one of the reasons I'm glad I have almost every figure I want. I mean, a Banshee, a Blob, and an Avalanche, and I'll be pretty set with my Marvel Legends X-Men collection. Give me a spot, and Spider-Man's pretty much polished up. Well, I need modern boomer or classic boomerang. So, while I never got Galactus, I'm so glad that fans are loving it. And in a lot of ways, I think Galactus is going to be looked at in the future as the last great figure before adult collecting just kind of spun out of control due to pricing. And the HasLab and Basic figures are all indicators of this. I hope this video was clarifying and offered some good food for thought. If you liked it, let me know. Comment. Let me know questions you have. Are there follow-up videos you'd like to see? Sharing this video is the best way to show support for this channel, and I most appreciate it. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, and I'll see you next time.